Hey sister friends, it's Terry from Sisterhood of the Traveling Brush. Thanks for joining me today. If you're new to my channel, I share all the different tips and tricks that I know and use in my studio for painting furniture and canvas. I hope you will subscribe and watch the videos that come out twice a week. And let me show you what we're up to today. This is the same piece that we did the, the custom board for, coming out with custom colors for the client. And we're about to put the second coat, or I'm about to put the second coat uh, on the top surface, well, over the whole thing, but on the top surface especially, it's very important that it be smooth. So I'm gonna show you how I get a smooth finish using chalk mineral paint. Any of the chalk and clay-based paints are, for the most part, going to show brush strokes. A lot of people like that look. It's very popular right now. And when you use something like a chip brush, thought I had one here to show you, but a, a, a natural bristle brush, then you can accentuate those uh, brush strokes. Or if you're wanting to have less of them show, then you make sure you have a paint that's self-leveling. This was painted with Dixie Belle chalk mineral paint, which is a self-leveling paint, but it's not perfect. It can't make up for me painting dry and using a natural bristle brush. So we're gonna be using a, uh, me, uh, but it, both of these are synthetic bristle brush brushes. These are synthetic, fake, not from an animal or whatever, bristles. And they hold a, a good bit of paint, maybe not as much as a natural bristle brush, but they are more likely to give you a smooth, flat, factory looking professional finish than a natural bristle brush for sure i'm going to be using this i'm going to be using my misting bottle because i want to keep for this final coat i want the paint to be very liquidy so that it has every opportunity to self-level itself so those are two main things i got a bucket of water over here and my paint but i want to show you the first thing we're going to do is sand it a little bit and uh, in another video i'm going after i get this coat dry we're going to come back with an electric sander so you can watch for that if you're interested and distress this piece but whenever you're just wanting to lightly sand now this is not even a scuff sand like you would do underneath on a slick surface this is to just knock down any imperfections you see i see one there any runs you see any uh, brush strokes that you see. And there's all kinds of sandpapers that I use here. And it depends on, this is a 120 grit as well. This goes on my sander, but I use them by hand as well. But whenever you're looking at the grits on your sandpaper, the higher the number, the finer it is. So 120 is pretty abrasive and I could do that to hand sand to distress, but not for this top part. And these are a couple of well loved and used sanders from like Lowe's. This one says medium. This one doesn't say anything. I have no idea what the grits are on these, but they feel rough. So I'm guessing anywhere from 80 to 120. Then we have the Dixie Bell sanding sponge, which is what I am gonna use, and uh, this one's well loved as well. This is a 200 grit, so you can go up to a 300 grit and a 400 grit if you're wanting to like buff to a glossy finish or something like that. Just as an FYI, a brown paper bag is equal to about a 600 grit, but that's not what we're going for right now. What we're going for right now is about a 200 grit. So if you have a Dixie Belle sponge, uh, sand and sponge, use that. If not, go wherever you buy your sponges at or wherever you buy your sanding paper at and get one that is about a 200. One other thing to think about is how you place your hand on your sander. If I grab it like this to hold it so that it's secure, it's gonna have pressure marks from these two fingers. Let's see if I can do that. See how, definitely you can see from there, there's where one finger was at, there's where another finger was at. This isn't sanded enough. So that's gonna create a whole another problem for me. So I'm wanting to make sure to use 
well, this way, use my whole palm on here. I'm going to go the wide way instead of the narrow way. And I want to go with the grain of the wood. So for this desk, it's this direction. So I'm going to put it here. I'm going to put my whole hand on it. And I'm going to go down. This shows where all of the high places were. Can you see that? You can see where all the brush strokes and high places were. So obviously, I'm gonna have to go over it again. Have no idea what the white is, because this is a brown desk underneath, but it's probably one of the minerals in the paint. We're not gonna worry about that. I can still feel a little bit of texture on there. So I'm not wanting to sand too hard. And you would do this, say if you wanted to put three coats on here, you would do this in between every coat. So I'm gonna continue in this fashion until it feels more smooth. And I, I, cause I can feel the ridges more now that we're starting to lightly sand it down. So I'm gonna continue in this fashion until it feels smooth. And then I'll show you what we do next. One more thing, if you can see here, I am not just moving my arm. I'm not sitting stationary or standing in one spot and then just moving my arm because when you do, that causes a little bit of natural curvature. And since we're wanting to keep this as straight as we can, if I sand in this method, see what it does? So I'm putting my arm where it goes and I'm sliding out in my chair. If I was standing up, I would be walking. Um, because when you try to do it with your moving your arm over the large surface, it's gonna it's gonna curve on you. I see there is a bristle right here. My grandson Shelton put the first coat of slick stick on here because this was a slick surface and he did that with a chip brush and chip brushes are notorious for losing bristles. What I usually do is if I see it right then of course I get it up but if not later on usually you can just rub it with your finger and rub and rub and rub and rub and rub and it'll come loose. This one's pretty embedded down there. Can you also see the difference between using a medium grit and a finer grit and how much that it takes off in one time? to have a drip there of the slick stick. We had two coats on here and I didn't check it before I started painting. So I'm using a little bit of a stronger grit. This is probably a 150 or something like that to try to knock down anything that's raised not normally this long or this time consuming. If I would have paid attention to this before I put the first coat of paint on, we wouldn't be doing this right now. Now, I'm going to mist it with water and Wipe it off with a shop towel to try to make sure and get all the dust off of it. See how much came off? I missed one thing. 
as we human beings do. <laughs> There's a little bit of texture here that I want to try to smooth down. It's absolutely ready to take the next coat and how we apply it matters too. We're gonna to use a lot of water on this, but I have a custom blend of paint, so I'm gonna show you that real quick too. The color here is a 50-50 mixture of Dixie Belle Collard Greens and Dixie Belle Gravel Road. While I was testing them for the customer, I just mixed all kinds of configurations of it in little containers, labeled them, and then this is what's left of the paint that I used to put on the first coat. There's a little bit of an issue here and that to be careful with, and that is this. I don't measure scientifically like with a level measuring scoop as if you're baking or something like that. I used these old soup containers that I had. You see where I wrote what it was on there because you're gonna forget, I'm gonna forget. I, I assume other people forget. But anyways, I couldn't mix everything that I needed and the likelihood of me having down to the, you know, minute amount of the same mixture in the next batch is pretty thin. So it's, it's gonna be a little bit different. So I, what I'm gonna do at, right now is use what's left in here to do the top. Because what I wouldn't wanna do would be have this drawer with the old batch, this drawer with the new batch, or right here where it's gonna show. But the top itself, because it's gonna have more coats of uh, gator hide on it in the end, top coat and things like that, it's gonna be okay if it varies slightly. So I'm gonna use what I have left up here, and then before I start putting the second coat everywhere else, I'll mix a new batch so it will be consistent. And what I do is pour it in until it looks about like half, then pour the other one in until it looks about like half, and I'm gonna pat myself on the back. I'm really good at that because I had a cafe and you just learn 12 ounce, 16 ounce, 20 ounce smoothies and coffees and soups and croutons and dressings and all those. You use those ounce measurements so often for so many years, then you kind of just get the hang of them. I'm gonna put a little bit of water in here because it did dry out because of being in this type of container. I think this thing is soy lime, something good for the environment or something like that. So I'm diluting that down a little bit. It, because mine was thick, let me stop real quick. If your paint's just normal, like straight out of a brand new jar, well, you wouldn't need to do this. Now I'm going to dip my brush in my bucket of water. I dipped it all the way in, take out the excess there. So working with a wet brush, working with a synthetic brush, working with the sanded piece, working with paint with plenty of moisture, and working with the Mr. Bottle. <laughs> We're gonna, you're gonna have to trust me on this one. I would mist everything, then I would mist this little area that I'm about to work, and then I would have my damp brush, have my fluid paint. If you don't have a Mr. Bottle, just keep sticking your brush down in your bucket of water and, and go ahead and pre-dampen your surface. I mean, I wouldn't do this on paint that I just painted a couple of hours ago. This paint, you know, I wouldn't want a chance reactivating it and it wanting to blend and everything else. This paint has dried all weekend. So definitely at least let it dry overnight. And the paint. See how liquidy that is? How fluid that is? Not watery, but just fluid. That's gonna help it to have more opportunity to self-level, but not so much that it dilutes the pigments, of course. lots of paint on there it's completely covered now I'm gonna come back with my brush see how I'm holding it like this and I'm gonna hold it I never was good at what perpendicular means but I want to use that word right now I'm gonna hold it almost laying down on here go straight all the way to the end you could mist again right now if you need to if you feel any pull or drag but anytime you need to stop you start again at the very beginning or the very end and go the entire way. You can't stop in the middle. I'm gonna dip just the tips. Let me show you. Here's my bucket of water. 
I dipped less than a half inch of my bristles into the water. Okay, I'm gonna continue this working very wet till I get all the way at the front. You see, you just don't put your, your brush doesn't need to be full all the way up to the ferrule, the middle part, just between a quarter and a third. We do not want to work it anymore once it really starts to dry, but you do increase your open time and that means the amount of time that you can play with it and move back and forth with it, with the water. That's called increasing your working time. If there is a little bit of a difference, this is what I'm showing you is for use with a chalk mineral paint, Dixie Belle paint, and it's a chalk mineral paint with an acrylic base, which means you don't have to seal it because it has an acrylic sealer built in. If this was a clay-based paint or a mineral paint that had no sealer in it, we would be lifting all the paint off of the surface right now. So this is not a method that you would use for DIY paint. Um, you could still sand it in the same way, but not wet it, not get it wet at all, no water. Then you would have to put a top coat over it, like a big top or whatever top coat you wanted to use. Let that dry, sand that smooth if it didn't self-level enough. Then put your next coat on, because if not, all this water that you're adding to the paint here would just reactivate the paint that's underneath it. Here's my brush flat. When I'm doing this, it's barely picked up. Can you see that? Maybe like that. Maybe just three eighths of an inch or something like that between this part of your brush and the surface. This is, of course, dragging it. Just the tips. You can see where the paint has never really been any farther than that up my brush. So even when I'm doing this, I'm only using those tips of my brush. This will dry. I'll see if it needs a third coat. If it does need a third coat to feel hefty enough, I'll put another a third coat, just exactly like we just put this one. See how shiny it is? And the, the streaks that you see in it right now, those are just areas that are already dry. This is gonna be smooth. I appreciate you. If you enjoyed this video, leave me a comment. That's, that's the only way I know that I'm giving you the kind of stuff that you wanna see. If there's another tutorial that you would like to see or a tip or something like that, just let me know in the comments and boom, I'll make it happen. <laughs> I'll do my best. If I can't do it, I'll find somebody who can. I aim to please around here. Thanks and don't forget to subscribe. Bye.